right? Okay. <clears throat> Guys, you are on. Okay, this is Chris, Philip, Mason, and I am Trevor. And our overall goal is to make the breezeway safe and dry for students to cross without interruption with pooling of water or any just water that's clogged up. And And we're going to do this through adding side panels with one way that the, uh, that the rain mainly uh, flows. We're going to add a crown in the concrete so the water flows out to the grass or, or the new drain will add in towards the auditorium closest to the road. Just to re-clarify, we would like to add uh, fiberglass side panels where the rain mainly flows in and add a crown to the concrete where the water would flow off, just any water where it would get on there. This water usually puddles up through that breezeway. And then we'll add a drain for any excess water. There's, a, there's usually a big puddle spot right near the exit of the auditorium towards, towards the road. And we want to add just a drain so it would pour off in there. All right, so to start, we had to find the length of our breezeway. So we opened up Google Earth, and we took a measurement from the start of the breezeway all the way around to where it ends over here on Young Campus. And we found that length to be approximately 600 feet, roughly. All right, so using the street here, as an x-axis, we took seven 30 feet, 30 foot intervals, and using quadratic regression as shown here, we found the uh, equation for our curve here to be uh, this, and we took the derivative of that so that we could plug it into the arc length equation here. So we integrated here and found that the length of our arc here was uh, adding this part here approximately 208 radians. Okay. So now that we've figured out how long the sidewalk is, the first thing we want to do is we want to add a crown so that all water that gets onto the sidewalk slides off. And the place that we want it to slide off and go to is this drain that we want to put outside the exit of the auditorium building. Okay, how much concrete do we need to make this crown? Uh, how we did it was we found the area of this triangle and it was 99 square feet times that by how long our sidewalk is and it came out to be 59,400 cubic feet of concrete that we need to make our crown. Uh, one of the biggest flaws of the breezeway is that when it rains, water just pours in from one of the sides. Uh, but I've walked into the rain a bunch, so I know that it doesn't really pour in from the other side, so there's no reason to 
put the wall on that side, but the one that does come in, uh, we've decided that we should put uh, fiberglass panels up that are 26 inches by 144 inches, which is 3 feet by 12 feet. And we'll put those all along that's the, the wall towards the main campus parking lot. We're going to put them all along the breezeway to block uh, the rain from the engine. And there's going to be about 300 panels that we need to completely cover that side. And we probably need about 20 for if any gets broken or damaged during the construction. Just you don't want to have a giant hole in your wall while the rain gets in anyway. Labor cost is a, a rough estimate because some we called several businesses. We tried to get like an idea of how much it cost, and they told us uh, that this job right now would be too big. And they wouldn't really give us a good idea. So we we looked at other jobs online, like averages and stuff, and the drain came out to be around fifteen hundred, <coughs> fiberglass panels around eleven thousand, concrete near 200,000 and the labor was roughly eight. This this total to about $290,000 for this whole project. So that's our project. Uh, thank you for listening. Any questions? Yeah, got questions. So um, I'm going to go back to the way you've learned your past 13 years and you've been with Mr. Howard and you do a project like this. Um, I found in his classes, and he and I talked about this when we had technology before, and, and that students just like to have a pencil and paper work things out um, and, and don't always like to engage in group projects and stuff. Can you tell me what you like about the way you had to learn this content and tell me one thing you didn't like about the way you had to learn and, and present this content? Presentation can't be part of your dislike. That's a given. Okay. Uh, well, one like that I liked was uh, to find different um, calculations. It was a lot easier to check online because you just looked up and found uh, that other people had done calculations and you can double check your own work. Okay. And uh, Coach Howard also helped double check. Right. Uh, one thing that we didn't like was that even though we did find a lot of information about the different resources that we would need, actually calling people uh, and getting them, getting help from them, uh, like getting investments, uh, did not work out. Another thing that I didn't really like is I feel like even though we presented the math, like I feel like it didn't really connect because you really have to like go through it. And, I guess do it to really understand it. So I think the math part doesn't really connect as well as like what we're trying to do. Okay. So you mean connect with us? Or connect yeah, connect with you, with you guys. Okay. Because you're just watching. How did you learn? Because I, if you all weren't here, that part of the math, we haven't had it in class. <clears throat> okay, so they got that through the project. That's tricky. Um, we, have, we get to it in about another month or so. Well, uh, I think for the most part what we did is there's a physics teacher named Mr. Smith is he knows calculus so he helped step us through part of it and what he he basically filled in the gaps that we got from looking it up online we looked at some Khan Academy videos some YouTube videos just different things that would help give us an idea of what we we're supposed to do how to do it uh, YouTube big help always they've got videos for everything but uh, Mr. Smith was a big help showing us the gaps that we we're missing and then just doing it just I guess finding out how to do it by actually doing it. Is okay. So to that question then, Mr. Berry, did you all um, work electronically together or did you all meet someplace and work in person? How were you able to use your technology? Uh, we used a bit of both. Uh, sometimes our schedules didn't work out to where we could actually physically meet. So we loaded the PowerPoint onto a Google Doc and shared it around so that all four of us could work on it and uh, each person had an updated version of the PowerPoint, so it was uh, very convenient. We also met in the library several times for a couple hours to do uh, But even if we hadn't been in the library, we could have still done all of it by just being on the computers. I'm impressed on how well versed these guys are in all of these groups on using PowerPoint and 
and all these tools that you really use in the business world. You know, I mean, very impressive. Now, in the real business world, and you were trying to figure out maybe a, a cheaper means to build that. Could you, like your biggest cost was concrete. Did anybody discuss an alternative material like uh, pavement? Well, you could probably get some scholarships or something, something like that for this, or grants. Yeah. Uh, we didn't, I don't think, I didn't think of another building material yeah. actually. Uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I know that doesn't figure into what, like the, what you are, but I'm just looking at in the real world if you were presenting a project to somebody. Well, for this, uh, that we've left out of this because we didn't think it would be too feasible, but uh, for the attaching the plexiglass panels, we had an idea that we could have construction core do it uh, because construction core does a lot of drilling and cutting uh, already with lumber. I don't know if the sheds are still out there, but if you pass them by, uh, they do a lot of kind of stuff that's about the same. So I don't know if they could do that or not, but it would help cut costs if you just got free student labor because you, know, be you know that's the bottom line. Oh yeah, that's they, what get, all they get a grade, you yeah. save a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. And if you came to me for $198,000 for concrete, I'd probably have you go back and explore that. Yeah. 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 Might have to go uh, half inch deep. Yeah. In, the process, <laughs> in the process of doing this, we, miss, did, or we, we didn't do the calculations right on the units um, for, the, for the crown. We did 1.65 high and then 5 feet, so our units are off. And when we did it, it came out to 11,000 even, basically. And then, like, pretty recently, uh, I don't know who was looking at it, but they were just looking at it, and they looked at it, and they said, is that five feet? Did we do this wrong? And we redid it, and it was 200,000. So, yeah. <laughs> we were expecting a low cost that we got. I'm curious no. why you guys chose to use gradients as opposed to a different. Uh, that was the... <coughs> Because I, uh, using the technology, I looked up a uh, calculator to help with the calculations, and that was the uh, measurements that they gave. So. One of the neat things for me was how they uh, plotted points and used quadratic regressions to get a best fit curve. Uh, that actually ties into Algebra 2. Is that where you do that? It's algebra 2, pre-cal. So it was across several of the disciplines they had to use their the things that they had learned, I guess, since about a sophomore in high school to be able to do some of that stuff. And if you've never been on Google Earth, it's really cool. By the way, Mr. Gray, the last shot of South Dole was mid-October, and I was showing them my truck is parked up there at the baseball field, and you can <laughs> see it. And, so. so, Coach, is there another formula that these groups on the walkway could have used instead of this particular? Uh, you know, I wanted them to do it to use the arc length formula because that's going to be a calculus skill here in about a month or so. So there's pro the, really the real way to do it would probably been take out the little roller thing and just roll it up through there and figure out how much they are. But that was too boring. So uh, we wanted to use the arc length formula in the calculus. There would be more efficient ways if you were actually doing the project than do it on Google Earth. and and then using the calculus, you know, because it really wasn't that big of an area anyway. So you'd have probably just measured it with a little wheel. But we had a survey, just get the center line. Yeah, and yeah, what was neat, I had them look at two or three, <laughs> like the, nat the, na the graph of the natural log of X mimics it a little bit too. So they had, to, they had them go in there and look, so okay, is that one? The graph of the square root of X is pretty close. But then they did the quadratic regression to even get it a little more accurate. And those were close, but not perfect. And so their quadratic regression formula was, was pretty accurate, actually. We'd have less water pulled up, right? Well, and it, well, it started, be, I'll tell you why I came, because one of the rainy days, and I got drowned again, and I was mad. So <laughs> I said, you all need to fix this. So <laughs> He's, uh, he's passive-aggressively passive telling you uh, <laughs> okay, also well, it's pretty passionate. Wall, but it's see through, so they use fiberglass. Exactly, so that we don't have yeah. children, whatever children do when they're in secret. How's that? Yeah. We, we knew it couldn't be enclosed. Amen. So. Well, folks, that was our last one. Thank you all.